about my perfume collection The longevity, sillage, and of course the projection I spray them on my wrists and I spray them on my neck And I'm heavy on the trigger so you better hit the deck I was wearing six sprays of the Roly Portofino My girlfriend didn't like it, but what the fuck does she know? Next day I met a girl in a bar named Hannah I was feeling pretty good and wearing Dolce and Gabbana I asked her for a rating from 0 to 10 She said 3, I thought shit this can't be happening again I called up Frag by Shoe, he said, I need some compliments. He said, if that's what you want, then try DR Harm Intense. I was chilling later on, back at home in my room, when a friend on Facebook said, you must try DR on Parfum. Parfum, Intense, my head was really spinning. I decided to have a contest and see which one is winning. Okay, hello everybody. So the original Dior Homme Eau de Toilette was released back in 2005 uh, and then along came Dior Homme Intense in 2007. Both were composed, we believe, by Olivier Polge in conjunction with the International Fragrance Federation. In 2011, Dior took control of their own formulations and uh, the uh, fragrances were reformulated by Francois Demarchi. So the Dior Homme Intense fragrance is the one we're interested in today and the Dior Homme Parfum, which came along in 2014. Uh, these are both Eau de Parfum concentrations. So so let's find out what I think about them. How much a lady's flirt determines what I squirt. When two hours go by, then it's time to reapply. I'm looking for the juice that'll make the ladies loose. Okay, so here we go, Dior Homme Intense. Let's have a look at the presentation on Dior Homme Intense. So this larger one here is a 2014 bottle and the smaller one here is a 2015 bottle. People are saying it's been reformulated in 2015. Well, I don't know, but we can clearly see the juice is a much lighter color in the more recent 2015 bottle. Now, these things have artificial colorings in them, pretty much all perfumes do. So Dior, I think, can make these pretty much any color they want and they could still smell the same. It could be bright pink if they liked. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the actual smell of the uh, liquid has changed, but it implies that there may have been a change. Okay, so let's talk about Dior Homme Intense, but before we do that, I just wanted to mention, I know that my channel now has gone over 1,000 subscribers, which I'm thrilled about, but I'm sure a lot of you may be worried that uh, I may be getting big money offers in from the perfume companies, and they may be influencing me to say nice things about certain fragrances, which I don't really mean. Uh, but rest assured, guys, my integrity remains intact, and however big the channel grows, I will always be bringing you truthful op opinions and assessments that can genuinely help you with all of the fragrances okay so let's move on to our review of Dior Homme Intense this one is an absolute classic a hall of fame fragrance for a lot of people right up there with classics of all time things like Creed's Green Irish Tweed Chanel Antaeus uh, and of course Paco Rabanne's One Million Invictus and Black Excess <laughs> So it's a really good one, as in most people's opinion. So I'm gonna just spray the 2015 one because that's the one you people can get in the shops now. I've got the 2014 one as well, and I've smelled that quite a bit too. Thank you ever so much. Big shout out, as they say, to Ronak Ricky for uh, sending me Dior Homme Intense, the 2014 version. He also sent me the Parfum, which I don't actually own, and he sent me Dior Homme for comparison. So what a great guy, thank you so much to him. Um, so what do we get out of Dior Homme Intense? Well, let's look at the notes first, okay? So top note is iris, mid notes are lavender and embrette seed, and in the base we have cedarwood, vetiver, and vanilla. Okay, so let's spray this thing and see how it smells. Okay, amazing opening. As soon as you spray it, it's that wow 
f f that wow factor. Uh, I remember smelling this first time I smelled it. It was only about six months ago, and it, you know, you, many of you have maybe smelled this for years. For me, early in my fragrance journey, six months ago, I haven't been doing this long. This was incredible. I said, I never smelled anything like this. I thought, God, can a man wear that? Because it does smell a little bit effeminate, maybe, to the untrained nose. But a fantastic opening with a really strong, what I believe is an iris note. I haven't smelled iris, but it's, it's smooth. It's a lipsticky kind of note. There's a waxy, resinous kind of smell to me. And I get that sweetness as well. It's, it's rich and it's deep, but it, at the same time, it's soft and it's warm. So it's a very well-blended, well-made fragrance that has this kind of fresh iris notes. Iris can be a fresh ingredient, remember. Iris is in green Irish tweed, for example. But there's something deep and rich in there. You, from the combination of the notes in here, the vanilla and other things, I think you almost get a cocoa or chocolate-like vibe. A lot of people talk about that with this one. With this one, people also mention, uh, apart, in any of the reformulations, they've said the iris was toned down and there's a bit more of a pear note in this one. It's not listed as a note. But when I sniff it, I sort of can get that a little bit and I quite like it, so I don't mind that. In fact, I really like a nice pear note in my fragrances. So it's a fantastic fragrance. The smell that you get on this one is the kind of smell that makes you think you really should be wearing this on a night out, dressed up very smartly. You could pull it off for work, I think, and casual situations, but it's really more suited in your um, arsenal to be worn on nights out, special occasions, dates, uh, or perhaps just, yeah, it doesn't have to be a special occasion, but nights out or when you're looking smart, absolutely. Um, so it absolutely, for me, deserves its place as a masterpiece. I haven't lived with it and worn it tons and tons of times, but I've really enjoyed smelling it every time I have, and I totally get what the fuss is about. People talk about this one being niche quality, and again, I haven't experienced masses of niche, niche fragrances, particularly the richer, warmer smelling ones, but I can see where they're coming from. This one does blow your socks off a little bit in comparison to other designer fragrances. It's really, really well blended. It's got good longevity for me, even this most recent formulation, and the projection, I think, is not beast mode, but suitably good from what I can tell. It does have a decent amount of strength. It's an eau de parfum co concentration. So the blend of these notes is absolutely beautifully done. It's an absolute masterpiece of perfumery, and I completely get what the fuss is about. Ronak said to me, you will pull in this. That's He said I could quote him on that. I haven't pulled in it yet, but... When do I ever? But he, he said that you will, and I think it would enhance your chances with a lady. You'd be you smell you'd smell a bit classy, you'd smell a bit different, you'd smell like a rich man, even if you're not. So I think this one is an absolutely superb fragrance. I would give it a nine out of ten. That marks don't mean a lot, it's just a score. It's almost impossible not to like this smell. I would only say if if you're a man who doesn't feel comfortable wearing things that are a little bit metrosexual or unisex, this might not be the one for you. And again, yes, some women might say like smells a bit effeminate. I guess it might not be to every person's taste but if you like fragrances I really think you should give this one a try so now let's talk about Dior Homme Parfum okay so time to compare and contrast so on the left here we have Dior Homme Parfum it's the same size bottle but it's actually just a 75 mil and so we can instantly see that the Dior Homme Parfum is much darker in color. That doesn't mean there's necessarily anything stronger or different about the scent, but it means the company are trying to give us that vibe that this is a little bit darker and richer than the other fragrance, I would suggest. Okay, Dior en Parfum. What are the notes on this one? Let's find out. Top note on this one is iris. In the mid, we have sandalwood and rose. And in the base, we have leather, ambrette seed, vanilla, and cedarwood. The different from the DHI then is the rose, the sandalwood and the leather and the big one being the leather. So let's give it a spray. Let it air out. Yeah, basically to me, my first impression, and it was, I've sniffed the atomizer a bit too, my first impression is it's just stronger. I mean, it's a kind of basic observation, but it just smells stronger than the other one. It smells richer, deeper, and there's something different in there. It's like they got the other one and just put a couple of more ingredients in without taking anything out of the other one. Okay, I'm sure it's not quite that simple. But it's more leathery and more woody. Sorry, to, you know, it's a rather unoriginal observation because those are notes that are in it that aren't in the other one. More leathery, more woody, and more masculine. That's the difference. 
you lose a little bit of the iris or at least the iris now is is not such a, a big player it's like they've they've dialed the eq a little bit different the iris has come down and they've bought in a few little they've kind of remastered it and bought in some different frequencies there in smell terms with the leather so leather of course tends to smell manly and it's different to tuscan leather's leather but I'm not quite sure what the difference is, but to me it doesn't smell like Tuscan leather, but I can get something that I can kind of identify as similar to a pair of leather shoes or something like that. And the woodiness is there with that sandalwood, which is a, just a lovely note, one of my favorite notes and fragrances. So they've made it more dark, more rich and more manly. So if you found the other one a little bit off-putting because you felt it was a little bit effeminate, this could be the one for you. The other big plus point for this one, there's no reformulation issue. This is the vintage juice, if you like. You know, there is no reformulation. This is the original. So we are living in great times, guys. Have you ever wished you could go back to 2009 and rush out and buy all the Yves Saint Laurent original formulations? Well, you can't, but with this one, and it's, I think it's a much better fragrance than that anyway in the first place, we have the original available to us now. Not easily available, because it's quite hard to get, even in the UK, they don't have it everywhere. And uh, in America, I don't think it got a release, but, but you can get hold of it if you try. It's, it's being made and it's available. So great news. This doesn't have any reformulation issues. It's got beast mode longevity. It lasts for ages. The other one is good. This is amazing. It fills the room when you spray it on your hand or if you spray it on a piece of paper and leave it, you come back. I've done that a few times. It's wafting everywhere. Be careful on the trigger. Even, a, a, even someone like me would be careful on the trigger with this one. And I would say beast mode. We can use that term here. We can use the term beast mode. So brilliant, brilliant fragrance. Classy, opulent sophisticated rich warm deep and masculine a hall of fame fragrance yes for me absolutely i would also give this nine out of ten you do lose that iris note to an extent it's not so dominant so if you loved the sort of softness and the metrosexual maybe powdery vibe or vanilla vibe with the other one with the dhi you might lose a touch of that so you, you could prefer either one i don't think you can definitively say one's better than the other i would give them both nine out of ten but i would narrowly favor this one if i had to award the win to one because the performance is not in question there's no reformulation issue it's stronger so for me uh, that just gives it the nod for me this is the original dh P, the original Dior en Parfum, whereas with the other one, you're always going to feel, oh, maybe I should have shopped around and maybe found an old one. So to me, the win narrowly goes to Dior en Parfum. Thank you very much for watching. As ever, whatever we're doing in life, let's project. Mm -hmm.